Welcome, welcome everyone. This is the Co-Pilot Show. It's Tuesday, July 27th. Danny Chan is here as our co-host, showing off his background of the Northern Light. It fits my t-shirt, actually. Oh, nice. <laughs> Nicely done. For those of you who may not remember, Danny Chan is from Off Viral. He is the, well, I don't remember, Facebook guy, right? He's the Facebook guy. I don't remember your Ex Facebook Yeah, guy. exactly. The <laughs> media buyer. <laughs> Idiot. That's it. See? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get it. And Danny's yeah, going to exactly. give us a presentation today. Yeah, it's the uh, part two of my last presentation on the Copilot show, which was about YouTube ads. So which was... um, if you guys remember that one, this is an extension of that. Um, if you weren't here for the last one, don't worry. I will go over uh, my webinar from just the presentation, the slides from the last one, uh, just to cover some basics before I move on and jump into like a live demo on how to launch YouTube ads if it's your first time. Um, so let me know in the comments if it is, if you ever launched a YouTube ad before, or are you planning on to, or, or let us know. Uh, let me know so I know what the experience level in YouTube ads are in the room. What's your experience with YouTube ads, Mitch? Zero. Zero. <laughs> No worries. You're going to be learning a lot today as well. Great. Awesome. So I we got, love learning. Go ahead. Uh, Nil from Steve and yes, sir, from Lenny, as well as Dustin. He's ran as before. Um, so cool. That's awesome. Um, again, this is like kind of like a beginner presentation on how to uh, utilize YouTube ads. Um, so uh, let's jump right into it. Should we start? Okay. And by the way, uh, for those of you who don't know, the replays are available. We're going to get that out of the way. Always replays are available in the YouTube channel for a viral inside your viral uh, learning center and over in the viral Facebook group. And Deborah, by the way, who always has wonderful comments for us, said that you were last on the show on May 25th. So if you're going to go back and look up part one, that was May 25th. And she gave That's the right. link here. Uh, but it says William and Danny Chan, uh, UV Media Buyer. That's the title. All right. Thank you. Yep, exactly. Um, so today we are going through uh, a walkthrough of how to launch YouTube ads. But um, I'm going to go through some slides in the previous presentation just to uh, cover our bases. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So I am Danny. I'm the media buyer over at Up Viral and the marketing manager at Connectio. Um, so I manage all of the paid ads uh, for both Upbrow as well as Connectio. And that, and that includes uh, Facebook ads, Google ads, as well as YouTube ads. Nice. Um, and Mitch, you're Mitch. Everyone knows who you are, but do you want to give a brief introduction? For uh, those I who am. Don't? <laughs> if you don't, man, you've got to go back <laughs> and watch some shows. Uh, I am uh, a a viral independent consultant. How's that for a phrase? There we go. That's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. So today's agenda, I'm going to go through, again, recap uh, what you need to get started and how to launch YouTube ads. Um, and then I'm going to go through like a live demonstration of how to launch YouTube ads. So if you already know how to launch YouTube ads, then um, you probably skip this one. Or you can stay here and, and, and review um, or learn maybe like a, a thing or two. but um, Pretty basic stuff today, but I'm going to go over like the different kinds of conversions, audiences, uh, types of biddings, strategies, ad placements, descriptions, and headlines and stuff like that. So, um, so last time we covered, um, you know, if I asked the question if Facebook was dead um, with the recent iOS 14 updates uh, and the privacy updates that Apple has been releasing, it makes Facebook tracking a lot more difficult. And if you guys are running Facebook ads, I'm sure you've had some difficulties currently or uh, will face some difficulties in terms of tracking, in terms of custom pixel-based audiences, which is the second bullet point here. Um, depending on who is opting in and out of your business can determine the quality of your retargeting audiences. And there's competition. Uh, Facebook, there's so many advertisers on Facebook and it's always beneficial to, for an advertiser to explore different traffic sources such as YouTube ads. 
And why YouTube ads? It's well, it's because it's one of the top ranked websites in the world. In fact, it's number two um, after google.com, youtube.com is the second ranked website in the world. Um, Facebook is number seven. These statistics were from uh, May, <laughs> a couple of months ago. So I'm pretty sure these are, are last month. Yeah, or a couple of months ago. I'm pretty sure these are, you know, still yeah. pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Facebook's number seven. And yeah, why not um, explore a potential traffic source on a number two website or even number one, um, Google and YouTube, basically the same. So the benefits of YouTube ads, um, there will be more eyes on your ads, more visitors and traffic means more eyes on your ads for people who have higher intent than any other traffic source. If you can make YouTube ads work, then you will have basically endless scale because there's so many people on YouTube each and every single day. There's near, new users each and every single day. And um, there's a lot of potential as an advertiser to start advertising on Facebook or on YouTube. Whether you're a lead generation or you are a e-commerce uh, business owner or um, you're selling a high ticket item, YouTube ads is works for everyone. But there are a few key things to, in order to make those work. Um, secondly, you can speak directly to your audience. So you can utilize keywords, um, keyword research and placement research to find your target audience. Um, so keywords, obviously, we all know what that is. And different businesses have different keywords and different niches. Um, so I won't get into that too much. But placements are basically um, YouTube ads that you can place your ads in front of. So if I'm selling a product, let's say I am selling a product, uh, a Facebook ad course, like how to run Facebook ads, then obviously I want to run my ad directly in front of uh, YouTube videos that talk about Facebook ads. Um, so uh, there's tools like tubesift.com, T-U-B-E-S-I-F-T.com that can help you with this research, including the keywords as well as placements. Um, you just type in the keywords such as Facebook ads. Um, TubeSift will find maybe like 100 to 300 um, video ads that talk about Facebook ads that are monetized. And you can copy and paste this list and um, yeah, use this list, use these video links and show your ad in front of these people. Uh, and that gives you a higher chance of getting more conversions and more purchases. And you can't really do that with Facebook. Uh, number three, it works for most offers. Uh, again, like I said, if you're e-commerce or a lead gen or a high ticket offer, it'll work for you. And plus you can get, get away with a lot more. Um, Google and YouTube are a bit less strict in terms of compliance, um, but I'm not suggesting that you promote drugs or anything like that. Um, it's just that you can get away with more aggressive ad copy than you would on Facebook. Any questions so far? Any insight, um, Mitch? I, ju I just need to, uh, Lenny says he's not seeing the slides, but Lenny, I'm over oh. on the Facebook group. Hold on, Dean. Uh, over on Facebook, I'm seeing the slides. So I think it's just you, Lenny. Um, and that was yeah, tube, my screen. tube Stiff, right? T-U-B-E-S-I-F-T. A couple of people have asked for clarification. Yeah, TubeSift. Um, it's a great tool and it helps with uh, keyword research as well as placement research. And uh, some other things, I forget some other functionalities, but that's what I use it most for. And um, yeah, check out, check out that tool. I think he's friends with Wilco as well. All right, Toby, I'm, I'm sorry, Toby asks, how about the opportunity for business to business? Can I still do YouTube ads for business to business? Yeah, of course. Um, there's different types of audiences you can use. You could do like retargeting campaigns on YouTube as well. Uh, that's very beneficial. Um, if you were to launch, you know, a YouTube ad campaign, uh, I would suggest uh, a retargeting campaign. If you're running YouTube or Facebook ads already, uh, then retargeting campaigns are probably the easiest thing to get up and running on YouTube and start testing and, uh, you know, if people have visited your website before, you can retarget them with a YouTube ad. Great. All right, moving on. Uh, YouTube's are a, YouTube ads are a blue ocean opportunity. Take advantage of it. 
Again, you can get away with a lot more on YouTube in terms of compliance and ad approvals. I'm not saying you should be super aggressive, but you could be a bit more aggressive than you can on Facebook ads. Because Facebook ads, you know, it's hard to get a lot of things approved and sometimes, and uh, that ban hammer is, is not a joke on yeah. Facebook. Um, I do have a question, Danny. I, I know a couple of people have recent, I've said the blue ocean thing recently to people. What do you, what does that mean to you? Well, what does the blue ocean mean? It, it means yeah. like, um, yeah, it means it comes from the blue ocean strategy book, I think. Um, but I might butcher this description, but um, explanation, but it's basically a, where people aren't, you know, utilizing, you know, a lot of people are, um, you know, a lot of people are on Facebook already and they've run Facebook ads and there's a lot of competition uh, on Facebook ads. So that's uh -huh. what's considered a red ocean and uh, moving into a blue ocean where there's a lot of opportunity um, to scale and grow and uh, discover a new traffic source that I would be Great. considered a blue ocean opportunity. Great. Lenny says it means it's a sunny day at sea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Right. laughs> Thank no you, Lenny. blood in the water. <laughs> All right. Oh, and the second point is, is you can utilize Google Analytics to your advantage. Data is really important. We talked about this many times before. I'm sure Mitch has as well. Um, if you don't have Google Analytics installed on your website, then then you should. <laughs> Let me um, ask you a question about that, Danny, seeing as how I love yeah. to get distracted. Uh, I Google Analytics has all the data in the world, but it's... <laughs> ugly if you don't know what you're doing and if you haven't had training do you know of anything that's just really easy that gives you a better analysis of google analytics than google analytics is icky stuff that's a good Something question simple um uh, i don't know i'm just so used to google analytics and yeah it's ugly platform um, that's what <laughs> i use the most um right but uh, there's a lot of YouTube videos on how to get the data you need and how to extract uh, the information yeah. that you need. Yeah, in order I know. To make good decisions on your website. But um, yeah, do you use any other tools than Google Analytics that makes it simpler for you? Well, I I, I use a tool called Funnelytics. Uh, bought a lifetime deal many years ago, so I'm I'm kind of blessed because I know it's expensive. And it's a graphical representation of your website. And you can poke in and look at data that way, but it's not pulling from Google Analytics, it's collecting its own data. Um, oh, Steve see. Thailand says, what about DIB? And that's D-I-I-B. I have never used DIB. I know other people use, use DIB, but I well. Yeah. Um, Lenny asks, what about off viral links? Are you using them? Um, but in terms of what? I'm so what sure. he's talking about is like the tracking link. So, so UpViral has the ability to add tracking links, but it also has the ability to add UTMs. So yes, the answer is since the UTM codes go into Google Analytics, obviously that would help you. Yeah, cool. All right. All right, moving on. Um, for YouTube ads, there's higher intent, which means indicates a higher likelihood for a particular uh, action to occur, such as purchasing, signing, signing up for a lead, et cetera. So uh, people searching for where can I buy shoes? Um, <laughs> where can I buy Prada shoes online? Um, obviously someone is looking to buy Prada shoes online. And um, if you have an ad on Google or YouTube that, the, that shows them where to buy Prada shoes, uh, then you have a likely higher chance of converting that user. And same goes for any of these other examples too, like how to buy Bitcoin in 2021, uh, best place to buy skincare, uh, lay right pomade review. Um, so, if, you know, if someone's searching for a hair product and they want to see reviews, then you could potentially, and if you're selling a hair product, um, you could place your ads in front of these keywords and into the user's eyes. And yeah, the keywords. Uh, worked really well. Nice. The second I touched on is video, uh, YouTube video placements. So you can place your ads in front of videos that 
match what you are selling. So I'm sell if I'm selling a Facebook course, I want to target people who are watching, um, you know, tutorials on how to launch campaigns or how to uh, set up custom audiences or something like that. So uh, these are relevant people who are actively searching these topics and you could place your YouTube ad in front of these eyes. Uh, the next is competitor keywords. Um, yeah, this is a great one as well. If your niche or your product is highly competitive, um, you can use your competitors uh, branded names to your advantage. Um, I know there's a lot of up viral competitors. So, um, <gasps> what? you know, we can use these competitor keywords to our advantage and should put our um, ad on top or in front of their eyes before they click on your competitors. So right. two questions. Yeah, it is yeah. cool. Of course, you're talking about competitor keywords and Captain Flint asked the question, where can you research competitor keywords? Well, you just have to research who your competitors are. I mean, Google is a good place to start. Um, but how yeah, do you know what true. keywords they're using is, is really the question. You know, are you, is there a place you can go oh, find that out? Oh, I'm not sure. Um, but I was talking about like um, your, you know, your competitors' brands, like their right. names. Okay. Um, so if I know uh, some up viral competitors, maybe viral something, or I don't know, um, you can use those branded names because okay. people might be searching for that competitor. Um, so yeah, you can put ads in front of their eyes as well. I know, uh, for example, it's it's difficult in Facebook, at least I think it's difficult, or I've heard people talking about it since I don't do squat with Facebook ads. Uh, finding the right targeting, Facebook limits what you can target, right? You, certain keywords and stuff, you just can't stuff it in. So are there any limits to the kinds of keywords you could put in there? Um, there are no limits, um, but it is like if no one's searching that for that particular keyword, then don't put it in. Um, you know, you can utilize other tools like SEM Rush. Uh, that's a popular like SEO tool. Right. Where you could research um, specific keywords and how many people are searching these keywords. And that's they're so searching on. It, I'm sorry, SEM Rush would give me data on if they're searching on Google, right? As opposed to if they're searching on YouTube. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same thing, but you get, get kind of a feel I, of, I, you know, what people are are, yeah. are searching. That's and, fine. Um, I, I'm just yeah. playing the devil's advocate here. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so if a keyword is getting like zero to 20 searches uh, a week or a month, then you probably want to just let that keyword go, right? Uh, that's a low, low search item. Right. Um, so just don't use that. Um, your competitor... Brand names could be low searched as well. So um, yeah, you just have to do research. Like anything in advertising or before you launch a campaign, you're gonna have to do research on your competitors, do keyword research, um, you know, who's using the product, what kind of people are using the product, your target audience, what are they interested in? Um, what do they like to eat? <laughs> uh, do they drink coffee or I don't know. <laughs> You know, I seem to recall, Danny, that we did a show like about 10 decades ago uh, on uh, creating your perfect avatar. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder right. yeah. in the archives whether or not people could go find that show and find out more information about that. Yeah, exactly. That's a really important topic um, before you start, you start advertising is to research your target audience. And we get a lot of, um, you know, support questions is like, um, I'm having trouble what, <laughs> what uh, interests to use or something like that. Um, when it's, you know, there's so many interests. Um, if yeah. you're in the music niche, then perhaps you can dive into musicians, artists, uh, different types of music, uh, instruments, uh, different types of instrument uh, brands and so forth. So there's a lot that you can uncover um, during your research that you can use to your advantage. Great. And, uh, and I'm, I'm dragging on that because it's, as we just said, incredibly important. 
so many people try to shortcut this process and then they blame the tool that yeah. the tool is not working. It's not the tool half the time. It's the fact that you haven't done your research and found the product. If you're doing a contest or a giveaway or you're doing lead marketing or whatever you're doing, uh, I go back to what, and I, I just recently saw this again and I'm like, oh, that explains it so well. Um, I'm trying to come up with his name. Bradley Waldrop, who is an up viral guy, said a long time ago, and I grabbed this from him, he's like, yes, you can, you can use that. Find something that your audience is willing to crawl through broken glass to get, and you're going to get a better result. How do you find that? you got to do research that Danny's talking about. you got to go find out what's working for your competitors, what's working for you. Don't just plop this off and go, I know the perfect product to put in a contest or a campaign or a lead magnet. Do your research, folks. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. While we're there, and, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, one more thing is, you know, after you do do your research, you're writing the ad copy would be a lot easier too because you're talking like your customer, talking to your customer like you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it, it, I, I'll, I'll give you an example. It's been such a, a difference for me. I, I'm at my own personal branding about what I do. I've recently switched because I was listening to what people were doing. And somebody finally said something that resonated with me. And as I roll forwards, it's resonating like crazy with the people I'm talking to. So pay attention to the words that people use, folks. It's important as heck. Um, it's going back, uh, somebody said, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Keyword everywhere. The keywords everywhere is a good place to search. That was Jeff Stark. Um, and Bakshara said the same thing. And brand watch from Deborah Lloyd is a good place to learn competitive analysis. So for those of you looking for tools, there's two. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Uh, let's keep moving. We have a lot to go over. Okay, um, sorry. So next slide. Uh, it's also great for retargeting campaigns. I touched on this already. Uh, if you were to, if you're already running Facebook ads and you're not running YouTube ads, then retargeting ads on YouTube is the easiest thing that you can launch. You can really right. test what the retargeting video ads that you are that you have on Facebook, and you can just kind of test it on YouTube. Um, however. You know, having a specifically uh, YouTube edited video ad uh, is more beneficial, but um, it might work. So it's definitely worth testing. Just a few steps uh, labeled on the screen. Install your Google tag, set up your conversions, create audience. Um, you can utilize it for all of the Google campaigns, Google search, YouTube display, uh, discovery ads and so forth. And then you just optimize. Um, so if you're running Facebook ads, it's basically the same as Google, um, but just on Google. So I want to interrupt one more time since it's appropriate. Martha's asked two questions. I'm going to save question number two for later. Can we want a launch or advertise giveaways on YouTube? Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure, actually. I think you can, though. Uh, I mean, don't quote me on like, that, but, yeah, but I'm but, not sure, actually. I mean, I know YouTubers that do giveaways all the time. So yeah. they're doing it within their channel. I just, it's a good question. I just don't, I, I don't know why you couldn't, but you're the um, I have a feeling you might not be able to just because sweepstakes and giveaways might fall in the same category. But um, if your video ad somehow, I don't know, kind of discreetly mentions it or you just bring them to the landing page, then um, I think it's fine, but okay. it's worth researching. I'm not, I'm not an expert um, in that regard in terms of that YouTube policy. Uh, so don't quote me on that. Huh. <laughs> okay, so scripting out video ads. Um, the first is getting attention. You need to get the attention right away within the first three seconds. If you don't, you'll be skipped. Uh, number two is establish credibility. You want to show people you're someone to listen to. 
We want to have call to actions um, within the first 30 seconds because um, if they skip you before the first 30 seconds, um, they don't have to pay for that click. But um, if they watch after 30 seconds, then you're going to have to pay for that watch. Um, number four is testimonials and proof, uh, whether you're e commerce store or lead gen, you got to have this. This is a, a must. And a final CTA. And um, I usually we usually test out three to four different intro angles and hooks to see which has the highest CTR. And uh, we scale the one with the highest CTR. Hmm. Cool. cool. And then what you need to get for uh, what you need to get started with your first YouTube campaign, uh, you need a Google ad account. Um, pretty straightforward, setting up the following Google tag and conversions and audiences if you plan on doing retargeting. And then the second, you want to have a video ad that you can use. You want to upload that video ad onto your YouTube account and you can keep your video ads unlisted, meaning that your video ads won't show up on the page. They'll just be private videos and you can use that YouTube link for your uh, YouTube ads. And number three, you want to have your headlines and descriptions prepared and ready to go. Uh, this goes back to doing your research and then writing um, ad copy. In this case, headlines and descriptions to match what you're selling and what you want them to do next. Um, are uh, Captain uh, Tyler, uh, Captain Tyler, Captain Flint, wants to know, <laughs> is there any recommended length of ad for a video? I'm sorry, recommended link? A link. How long? Oh, Time how wide. long? Um, um, yeah, it usually depends what you're selling. Uh, if it's like an e-commerce product, I would say anywhere from like 40 seconds to 90 seconds. Um, we have video ads that are 20 minutes long um, for Connectio. Uh, we use the, the VSL that we're using for our free training. And we use that video. It's 20 minutes long and it works, converts really well. Um, so it depends what you're selling, right? If you're selling a high ticket offer, perhaps it could be anywhere from three to 10 minutes or even longer. Um, but the main thing about the video ad, it has, it has to have all those elements. It has to grab them, it has to make them keep watching and uh, have, it has to have a call to action so you can direct the users inform the users on the next step if they're interested. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, so let's see how to launch a campaign. So I'll go over some of the aspects of the campaign launch, the bid strategy, networks, additional settings, keywords, audiences. I think we've covered keywords and audiences already, but if there's anything, then um, I'll go through it. Okay, before you do that, I'm gonna go ahead and ask Martha's question. Uh, is there any kind of budget restriction? She said, once I started promoting an e-com product on YouTube, but I've been told I need a thousand to three thousand US dollar budget. Does that make sense? Um, never heard of that before. Um, but I think uh, Google does gatekeep some some functions of the Google backend. Um, so the, the dashboard, I guess. I think you have to spend a certain amount. Uh, I'm not sure what that amount is um, before you get all those functions. But um, even if you have a brand new Google ad account, um, I don't think the budget's restricted. Uh, I've never okay. heard of that before. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, move on to that demo. All right, no worries. So this is our Google ad account for Connectio. Um, the Upfire one is quite boring. We don't have any YouTube ads for that one yet because um, we're still working on the funnel a new funnel um but i mean it's all the same um as you can see here this is the google, this is the google dashboard um you could run your google ads your search ads from here your display ads everything you need to do from here um any and then we chance have all these can, active i'm sorry any chance you can like hit command plus a couple of times and make that bigger oh yeah awesome. <laughs> there we Thank go you. no worries um so yeah Basic layout, um, you'll get used to it once you're in there a bunch, um, just like the Facebook ads manager. It's quite confusing at first, but once you're in there and you're playing around with it and everything, then uh, it should be easier. So 
This is what the initial dashboard looks like. We're going to create a new campaign. Um, and then it'll, it'll, it'll lead you to this page where you have to decide um, what goal that you would like to make this campaign. Uh, this is basically a campaign objective, same like Facebook, but do you want sales, do you want traffic, uh, do you want leads, um, brand awareness, et cetera. Um, Command plus again, you would you? Oh yeah, for sure. Can't see that? It, it's <laughs> kind of hard. Okay, no worries. Um, but yeah. The ones, um, if you have a product to sell or if you're in lead gen, then these are probably the only two that you need to focus on. So sales or leads. Um, today, we're just going to go for leads. Okay. Um, so it's going to click that. But Google, the, uh, it doesn't really matter what you pick. Google usually um, delivers pretty high quality traffic. Um, if you're picking an objective on Facebook, you have to pick the right one, right? If you yeah. want to sell something, you gotta you gotta convert, uh, you gotta pick conversions and then purchases, right. right? Not leads or like video views or anything like that. You're not gonna get sales from those campaigns. With Google, it's they can deliver pretty good traffic um, to you, uh, whatever you pick, even if it's website traffic. Um, you know, uh, depending on what you're selling. The, the traffic's pretty good, but we're gonna focus on sales and leads. So we're gonna click okay. leads and then you'll have a campaign type. There's Google search, there's display, there's shopping. If you're in e-commerce, you can set up that. Um, there's smart discovery. But the ones we're gonna focus on today is video, um, how to generate customer leads and conversions with video ad formats designed to encourage people to express interest and take action. And video, that's where YouTube comes into play. It's automatically YouTube ad. Click on video, and then we're going to click continue. So you get to this page where you kind of design your campaign. You get to name it here. Um, uh, again, I touched upon the importance of a proper naming convention. So please uh, keep everything organized. Um, so we're just going to call this 27. Um, a viral demo, then feeds viral webinar. I'm going to ask you to hit command plus again, because it, it is very small, especially when it's going it? through YouTube. Yes. So no a couple of people in the channel are asking for bigger. Thank you. All good. Um, hopefully you guys can see this. <clears throat> it's, it's better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. The first thing you have to worry about is the bid strategy. And uh, I'll go through it over here. So there's two types of bidding. Uh, one is maximum conversions. And the second is target CPA. If you're a new advertiser to YouTube ads or you have a brand new account with no data, then I would focus on maximum conversions. So Google will roll out, or uh, Google would um, try to find as many conversions as possible within that budget that you describe it. So roll this out for brand new campaigns to start um, getting data and feed Google's algorithm. After around 50 to 75 conversions, you, will, you can roll out target CPA. Now target CPA is the one that I use more frequently. Um, it's the best type of bidding after initial rollout. And basically once you get enough data and you realize that um, you're getting a lot of these conversions for around $50 and you're profitable, then you can kind of play around with the target CPA. Hey, I want, you know, conversions, Google, try to find me conversions at $35 instead of 50 and try to find that sweet spot where Google is optimized and can find you the cheapest um, cost per conversion. Cool. So, so again, if you're brand new, start out with maximum conversions. If you're target CPA, um, if you already have data, you can kind of set, set the, uh, as you can see here, based on performance of your campaigns across Google Ads, your suggested target CPA is 22 euros and 31 euro. So Google kind of knows based off the data um, what your target CPA should be. But uh, once you get enough data, you should know that as well. So, but today we're going to stick with maximum conversions. And then this is where you set the budget. So we're going to do maybe like $10. We're not going to make this go live. This is just for an example sake. 
um, networks. Um, I, I like to leave this alone um, as the standard settings. Um, okay. This will go on display as well and stuff like that, um, which is just like normal Google display ads. Um, if you're searching a website, if you're reading an article in the New York Times, um, your video ad can show up um, within the Google display um, functions and placements, excuse me. And next is location. So you know where to target your locations. Um, if you're, you're retargeting, I yuck to leave it in all countries or territories. Um, but for now, let's just go United States. There we go. You could kind of narrow it down, but I like to keep it broad. Similar functionality as Facebook ads, um, as you can see in <laughs> languages, I like to keep it English. And then here's where I like to adjust some things. So if you click on additional settings here, right under ad extensions. I like to leave all of these alone, like content exclusions, ad extensions alone. But um, here's where you can choose your conversions. So you can create custom conversions within uh, Google Ads, depending on the flow. So if I am running ads to a, perhaps an up viral campaign, um, I want them to hit the landing page and then I want them to take an action, enter the email address, and that will trigger a custom conversion on Google and you can label that. So here I can choose custom uh, actions, conversion actions for my campaign that I've already created. As you can see here, Connect Explorer, uh, 30 days Connect Suite trial. Um, they bought or they signed up for a video training lead et cetera, et cetera. Um, as you can see here, there's a bunch, but um, you wanna focus on perhaps in this example, you wanna focus on someone signing up for uh, a free training or um, something like that. So we're gonna consider them a lead. And you can create those uh, conversions in here tools and settings. And then if you go to measurement, there's conversions right here where you can play around with it and um, set up your conversions for every step of that funnel. So you know how many conversions you get for each step of the funnel. And I think that's important too. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to interrupt you just briefly because I think Pat has a good question. Uh, timing wise, uh, anyway, uh, rookie question, can you please explain what CPA means relative to the big picture? For example, if your CPA cost per action is $50 for a product that sells for 20, how is that profitable? Well, that's not profitable. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so well, uh, obviously that there's something, you know, the data is obviously that your traffic costs are probably too expensive. You're getting conversions to $50 for your $20 product. So, um, you should focus on optimizing your creative or optimizing your product or optimizing your offer, your website and so forth until you find what the issue is. Um, but generally, if, if you do have a converting product or offer and your, um, you know, if your product is $100 and your target CPA or your CPA is 50, then you're probably profitable, hopefully. Right. Um, so you can kind of play around with that. So, so hopefully that makes I mean, sense. In in the example in your case earlier, you were uh, it recommended something like thirty euros or thirty five euros or something, and therefore I think you, and then you did ten dollars per day. So I'm I think at least in my mind also as a newbie I'm kind of sitting there going wait a minute that that's a lot of money for for a an action and an action could just simply be somebody becomes a lead right right so yeah you have to figure out like, what's a profitable cost per lead for you okay. um, and for your business like you have to figure out okay if 100 people sign up and that's considered leads how many right. of those people are going to take the next action which is purchase a webinar or purchase a course etc so you kind of have to figure out do your research about these numbers um, right. Once you start um, advertising, because advertising is all about numbers and data, and then optimizing on those on those numbers. So, 
Okay. Um, and, and just as reference in your case, that blue box is looking at your data for Upfire or Connectio and, and your product costs and all those other things. So we're looking at something that may not be applicable to Pat, whose product is 30 bucks. Or yeah, this is only for this particular Google ad account. So right. these figures are, are not relevant to you at all. Um, this is just an example, obviously. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, okay. These numbers will change depending on your numbers and right. your tests and your campaigns. So um, I just wanted to make I'm not gonna, Yeah, I'm not going to follow these target CPAs because uh, this is based off the performance of all the campaigns across Google Ads. So it's including the search campaigns, it's including right. the display campaigns, as well as the YouTube ad campaigns. So you have to look at the YouTube, the video campaigns separately and determine the data from, from those campaigns and uh, figure out how to optimize from there. Okay, um, thank this, you. this number is taking into account all the leads that we're getting um, and as well as all the purchases that we're optimizing for as well. So. Our CPA for a purchase, that's for, for this example of uh, Connect Explorer, it's a $200 product. Um, if we get it for around $100.50s, we're happy with that, right? right. Um, leads are totally different. We want, I want leads for as cheap as possible. Right. Um, three to $5 is, is great, um, but the cheaper, the better. Um, we just want more people to the door and hopefully in our ecosystem and um, aware of us. Great, thank you. So moving down, I uh, just wanted to touch on one more thing in the additional settings, uh, and that is devices. So I like to set specific targeting for devices, and I like to remove TV screens. Now, a lot of people stream YouTube ads on their TV. Um, I like to as well, or like the if you have a Chromecast, um, you could you know you still get video ads um, if you have like a YouTube app on your TV, um, you still get you, um, yeah, YouTube ads as well. And you can skip those or just watch them. Um, but no one's going to take action on a TV screen <laughs> unless they right. remember your URL. Right. So I like to remove that um, just so it only comes up in computers, mobile phones and tablets. That's where people, uh, spend most of their time and that's where they can um, perform the next action that you want them to take, which is probably go to your landing page or your website. And they can right. easily do that on a computer, phone, and a tablet. Let me ask you, a, 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 I think it's obvious, but I don't, I have an Apple TV. Does that count as a TV screen? Yeah, I think so. Do you know? Yeah. Okay. Deborah, by the way, says great tip. So congratulations, Danny. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, that's it. And um, I wouldn't touch on this frequency capping and ad schedule. You can set amounts of how many times people can see your YouTube ads. Um, if your budget is high enough, then you can play around with this. Um, or if your audience is low enough and they're seeing your ads tons of times, then you can kind of set a, a cap to how many times they see your ad. Um, but in general, I like to leave it as is. Um, it's kind of more advanced, but for most of you guys, I would just leave it as is. Great. And then there's two um, ad group types here. There's standard and responsive. Um, standard is basically your skippable in-stream ad. Um, you know, you could like uh, skip after five seconds when you're watching a YouTube ad. Uh -huh. I'm sure we all, all know yeah. of this. <laughs> yeah. But responsive, um, your video ads show up in diff different uh, formats, such as Google Display or in, um, you know, websites like New York Times or stuff like that. When you're scrolling, you can potentially see that video ad um, in different formats not just on YouTube. So uh, in this case, just leave it standard, but I do like to split test uh, different campaigns for standard as well as responsive. Responsive, um, you need a lot more headlines and descriptions 
um, for Google so they can split test different headlines and descriptions and find out what's the best for you. It's kind of like um, a dynamic creative on Facebook ads. If you guys ever tested that, where you could input, you know, five headlines, five ad texts, um, five different videos, and Facebook will find the best one that works for you. In this case, it's responsive. You can split test different headlines and descriptions and Google will find the best for you. But to keep it simple, we're going to go for standard. Um, you can <clears throat> you can name your ad groups. These are basically ad sets. Um, right. So you can, if you're testing mobile only, or if you're testing keywords, uh, if you're testing a keyword campaign, you could name it. So for this case, okay. let's do keywords, Facebook ads. There we go. And then you have demographics and audiences. You can um, change that around different age groups and household income. Uh, I like to leave this kind of alone. Um, you can kind of play around with it, maybe like this. Uh, I just want to target people who are might be interested in Facebook advertising, perhaps 25 to you know 55 years old. So I would go for something like this. And a note here is just uh, people who haven't filled out if they're female or male uh, on the Google ad account. So Google doesn't really know. It's kind of just accounts for like maybe 1% of Google okay. ad accounts. So I like to just leave it. You never know who these people are. So um, audiences here, um, if you have set up your Google Tag Manager and you're, you're getting people on your website, this is perhaps where you can um, hold your retargeting audiences. So you can see here, we have a tag for Connect Explorer customer, people who have purchased within the last 540 days. And um, yeah, the size is around 1.4K to 4K people within the last 540 days. What's cool about this is that Google allows you to track um, these people for up to, I think, 400, uh, 540 days, which is awesome. Oh. Facebook only allows 180 days for their right. custom audiences. So it's kind of limited. Um, so that's why Google is kind of cool as well. But we're not doing a retargeting campaign. So we'll just leave that. We're doing a keyword campaign uh, for this example. So for keywords, Hey, I'm selling a Facebook ad course. What kind of keywords uh, would people be searching for? Do you think, Mitch? Uh, great question. Um, Contest. Perhaps maybe a like, or like how to set up Facebook ads or something there like that, go. or uh, setting up Facebook ads uh, tutorial. Or uh, how to set up a custom audience in Facebook, something like that, right? So people are searching these keywords and they want to know more about um, how to set up for their Facebook ads, um, or perhaps how to set up custom audiences or retargeting campaigns using Facebook. So they kind of have this higher intent in um, and when they're searching. So if you show, you know, if I show my Facebook ads course video ad to them, they might be interested in it. Yeah. Make sense? Yes. So we'll I want to ask that. you, uh, by the way, how are we doing on time for the rest of the presentation? Uh, I guess we're, we're kind of almost done. We just need to cover okay. the last bits of it All right. and we'll take some questions, if any. Great. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to um, leave it in the chat now and we'll answer it uh, towards the end. Okay. So topics. Um, so yeah, you can kind of go through topics here. These are basically like interests for Facebook. You got autos and vehicles, beauty and fitness. Um, you can kind of do your research again. Um, I think I would utilize Google Analytics if you're getting already getting website traffic. And um, I, I forgot what the columns are, but if you are already getting conversions and Google Analytics is, are displaying those conversions, can see the demographics of what where these people are coming from and where um, what they like to do. So, 
and, and what their interests are. So use utilize that. Okay. And then placements we touched about. Um, these are video ad placements. Um, find these links uh, using tubesift.com and you can input um, all the links here, as you can see, and it will show up. Your video ad will show up as a placement in front of these uh, video ads. Cool. And then here's where you create your video ad. So I have a sample one here. Uh, this is uh, the last of our webinar we did. And I'm just going to paste that in. And you can see what goes beautiful face here. And you can have a <laughs> URL here. Boom. Call to action. Um, let's say we want them to watch now. And then headline. Um, you can't miss webinar. Oh, too much. So there are specific only uh, 10 characters for the calls to action, as well as 15 characters for uh, the headline. So you kind of have to be creative. Um, wow. It is kind of limited. So um, let's see now, free training, something like that. Free training, watch now. And here's Wilco's beautiful face. And that's basically it. Um, you can name it. <laughs> and that is it. Um, once you create campaign, it will launch it um, based on the parameters that you have inputted. But um, that's basically how you launch a YouTube ad campaign. It's not that complicated, um, but hopefully I went through enough of um, the benefits of why you should launch YouTube ads. Right. And um, yeah, to help you get started. So hopefully you guys seems, enjoyed that. <laughs> seems pretty seems easy, rough. but um, yeah. But yeah, it's not rocket science. And um, ah, yeah, I, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it yeah, is. But I, think, all... I think all you guys should try YouTube ads. I mean, it's such a, I feel like it's an untapped traffic source and it's, you know, it's n number two ranked website in the world. So right. Uh, compared to Facebook, you guys might find some um, converting campaigns on YouTube. Well, I, I do think it's fascinating that, uh, and, and by the way, I, I yelled at Google when they bought YouTube. I said it was a dumb decision. <laughs> many, many years ago, I'm like, nobody's going to do anything <laughs> with YouTube. And now they're one and two. And so Google owns exactly. the top two spots, right? Both, search, yeah, exactly. both major search engines. Google owns. So yeah, you might as well be over there because they know what they're doing. <laughs> yep. And that's it. Um, like, again, that was pretty basic, but um, it, again, um, I just want you guys to get started on YouTube ads. And, um, you know, I, I preach Facebook ads all the time, but it has gotten harder in terms uh, after the iOS 14 update. And uh, I'm sure you guys know that too. So yeah. Um, so might as well try uh, a new and awesome traffic source such as YouTube. So I, I'm going to jump into my own questions, if that's all right. Um, yeah. Facebook has the ability to create a custom audience where you can upload like email addresses of people that have subscribed and stuff. I suspect that's not really possible on YouTube because they're not really basing things necessarily on verified emails uh is is that something you can do a similar way yeah that's something you can do you can upload lists um a customer list of people who have purchased your product already and you can exclude them from your campaign so your ads don't show up to these uh to these people okay good because and and that's great um, i'm laughing because steve thailand earlier said uh you need to change your upfire or your youtube settings because i see youtube i'm sorry i see up viral ads every day but i've owned up viral since 2016 so he wants uh, to be I off see. your list <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be excluded but um, we're only so running search ads so that's kind of weird um but yeah. perhaps for facebook um yeah i, I could fix that <laughs> eliminate steve from thailand all right <laughs> Um, so 
Matthias wants to know, how do you deal with the ads being delivered to infinite children's channels, infinite children channel placements due to household device sharing? Interesting, tough question there, I think. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> Pat says, I have a Shopify store. I have Connectio Suite subscription and a viral. Yay, Pat! Will all of these platforms step on each other's feet with Google Analytics, Tag Manager, et cetera? No, uh, they're all separate entities. Um, you know, the Facebook Pixel is not the same as your Google Tag Manager or your Google Tag. Um, they're two different snippets of code which you install on your website and they track um, on each on their individual platform. So they, don't mess up, um, and particularly. Um, same goes for the Connectio tools as well as UpViral. Um, but yeah, if you have everything set up correctly, they shouldn't interfere with each other. Uh, even, if, even if you have it set up incorrectly, they shouldn't interfere with each other. Um, earlier, uh, Captain Flint had asked, if you set a daily limit of $20, and one lead ends up costing you twenty dollars. Do they stop displaying after that first conversion? Um, yeah, I mean, if your budget's twenty dollars and Google has spent twenty dollars, then um, hopefully right. it's not spending more than uh, than what you set it to. Um, great, uh, Captain. Also asked, what's your budget recommendation for lead generation? I.e., download my new book for free to get started? Um, to spend what you can, um, what you can afford and what your marketing budget is um, for your business. Um, you know, if you can only spend $10 a day, start testing with $10 a day and optimize um, your campaigns so you can obtain the cheapest leads that you can. Um, if there's extra steps within your funnel, if you're selling something else after they've downloaded your free ebook or whatever, um, then you kind of have to determine what that conversion rate is from lead to purchase and then optimize from there. Cool. Burr asks, what percentage of your budget are you spending on Facebook versus YouTube? Um, good question. For Facebook, we are spending most of the budget. Um, we are spending, um, uh, I would say, 70% of the budget on Facebook and then 30% on Google and YouTube. Um, for Google and YouTube, most of our campaigns right now are basically search, um, uh, are branded. So if people are searching up viral, or Connectio or any of these tools we have, um, we want to be in people's mind. Uh, we want to be the first thing they see. In terms of YouTube, most of it is retargeting campaigns. So people who have visited our website already, we want to kind of aggressively um, show them a YouTube specific video ad uh, on YouTube. So, um, so yeah, but most of our cold generation stuff uh, cold traffic generation, lead generation, and conversion campaigns are on on Facebook. Hmm. Interesting. Is that? Do you see that changing based on the new iOS and Apple stuff? Yeah, I do want to test uh, more on YouTube, but uh, most of our video ads are engineered for Facebook. Um, so again, uh, uh, I touched on the point that you kind of want a, a video ad that is made specifically for YouTube. And we've all seen really good YouTube ads on YouTube. Um, you know, folks like Ty Lopez, even though he's annoying, he's kind of mastered <laughs> the YouTube ad um, and, and getting people's attention and uh, getting people well, to take the next step. So let me let me ask you, I, I'm, I'm absolute newbie. You're saying yeah. that there's a difference between how you would build the two. Give me Give me an example or some kind of criteria that's that's different in the way you would do a YouTube ad versus a Facebook video ad. Yeah, I mean it, it kind of the same, but um, for YouTube, 
you want to get their attention right? because they're watching content, they're consuming content already. And uh, you want to grab their attention within the first few seconds uh, so they can continue watching what you have to offer. Uh, Facebook, they're kind of scrolling, they're kind of, you know, just browsing. Okay. Um, so it's kind of different attention spans in regards to both YouTube and Facebook. Um, yeah, uh, let's see here. Uh, in terms of like a call to action, uh, you want to have the strong call to action. Uh, in terms of having a converting YouTube ad, yeah, you have to have a call to action and all the things I touched upon, which is uh, having reviews, testimonials, and a strong, uh, strong opener is key. You know, cool. A strong hook is key because I didn't mention we test around three to four hooks, even, and that is, we just have the same video ad, but the first few seconds are, are totally different. Yeah, I think uh, it's interesting because uh, for, for those of you who've seen uh, uh, viral ads or Connectio ads, Wilco's doing a good job of trying to grab attention in the first three seconds or whatever, the yeah. lightning bolt thing or the four <laughs> different guys, you know, four people that are him, you know, those kind of things are visually uh, attention breaking. So you kind of stop and go, wait a minute. So I think he's doing a pretty good job there. Or you, yeah. the team, all of you. Thanks. <laughs> um, Bakshura, and I apologize if I said that wrong. Can I make a YouTube? Can I make YouTube place my ad in a pre-identified YouTube channel or group of people? Um, I'm not sure about channels, but um, it goes back to the placements. If you grab enough of those video links. Uh, from that channel, then you can definitely place your, your video ad in front of those people who are watching those specific videos. Okay. I think that's the best way to do it, but I'm not sure you can target a channel. Um, yeah. Like you can't target groups on Facebook. That is just way too accurate, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Right. Intruding in Facebook size. Yeah. Uh, Steve Hogland asks, as more people opt out of sharing targeting data, will ad costs go up, down, or not be impacted? Yeah, I think there's a, there's another good question. There's a lot of competitors as well. And um, yeah, I've, I've definitely noticed that for Facebook, our CPF uh, cost per lead has definitely gone up and up within the last five weeks or so. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's definitely... Um, you have to keep an eye out on it. Um, obviously attribution is not a hundred percent correct anymore. So you might be getting leads for around $8, but Facebook is telling you you're getting it for around 10. So you kind of have to, um, have some really good attribution and set up your analytics as well as, um, use other tools, use wicked reports, um, to set up for more accurate attribution. So, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, know what your, you know, bottom line numbers are, how much um, data, gotta know the CPA data is and stuff like that too. So yeah, just keep an eye out on your data. What was the thing you just said? Wicked reports. Yep, wicked reports. So the wicked. word wicked reports okay. dot com. I yep. just wanted to make sure I got it right. All right. Steve from Thailand asked a question, and I think it's a little tough for you, but let's see if you can handle it. Danny, please give us a 60 second overview of how Connectio video works with the stuff you've covered tonight. I'm not sure I even uh, know what he's asking. Let's see if you can massage Yeah, this. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I, I think I used, because I used a Connectio YouTube ad account and then like a, a, a up viral YouTube link. So it was kind of confusing in terms of my example, but uh, hopefully you guys got that. Um, you know, if I go back to sharing my screen. Um, so, so I guess, I, I'm sorry. No I, mean, so I think what he's asking, by the way, I think I know, cause Wilco just released a product called Connectio vid, right? Or is it connect, yeah, connect video, video? Yeah. 
that's what I think he's asking. How does that work with what we've covered tonight? And I haven't touched that tool, so I don't have a clue. Does that does connect video make any difference? Does it help hurt with your? No, ad? that's a Facebook tool um, that helps you create custom audiences for people who have watched your videos or okay. so video view audiences. So completely separate thing. Um, okay. Yeah. There we go. Uh, Linda also said the first three seconds is more important on YouTube than Facebook. Yes, I think that's uh, uh, what uh, Toby asks, what does Tia Lopez do to grab attention? I mean, if you watch his ads, you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out. Um, but okay. he's like, you see all these books uh, or see my garage <laughs> or I don't know what he does. I forgot the ad, <laughs> but it is pretty funny and cringy at the same time. <laughs> cringy. All right, Captain Flint, I thought today you would also speak about how to combine up viral with YouTube ads. So, I mean, technically, again, uh, expanding, I want, I want people to pay attention that up viral doesn't do just contests. It does lead magnets. It does webinars. It does product launch formulas. It does wait lists. It does all kinds of marketing. And I think the answer, short answer is you can obviously combine up viral with YouTube ads. So you create a YouTube video ad and send people to an up viral campaign. Once they land on your campaign and they opt in, then you are going to gamify the share page, the thank you page. Yep. You're gonna ask people to start helping you build your audience. So the answer is all of things that Danny said today absolutely apply to up viral. Yeah, exactly. For YouTube up viral, campaigns you're collecting leads you're optimizing for leads basically you want more email addresses to build your email list and your audience and um you know you can use this audience to upsell them different things but for youtube ads yeah you can optimize your youtube ad for for leads right. and direct right. them to the website and have them take action on that website all right uh lenny lenny my good friend lenny was talking about showing lamborghinis um, Lenny also says another form of traffic for your up, up viral campaign. Absolutely. That's what we're talking about. All right. We're wrapping up questions. So if you guys have a question, shovel it in really fast, or at least raise your hand or not raise your hand, but Hey, I got a question because we're going to wrap this up. Um, Captain Flint says, okay, I'm one of the pioneer guys, 2015. I assume we're talking about up viral. And I have to re revisit it. Sorry to underestimate it. Yes, um, and 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 I think a lot of people have, have underestimated uh, up viral, which is the point that I keep trying to make. And I'm going to bang you guys with the two by four, or the bell, or anything I can get my hands on, because up viral does, in effect, all of your lead generation. No matter what lead gen you're doing. You should be adding what I'm kind of sort of saying an up viral bump or a viral bump on the back end. Don't just do click funnels for the sake of doing click funnels because you own click funnels or whatever page generation tool you have. Use up viral in conjunction with that tool to do your lead magnets, do your webinar sign up. I mean, and Wilco's been talking about this for years. We just haven't emphasized it enough because everybody thinks up viral is a contest tool and it does everything it does so much more than just contests so break your head smash your head if you're thinking about it <laughs> quit using all these other lead gen tools use up viral for everything and if you keep it keep your eyes on me that's everything i'm doing i'm converting all of my marketing i'm doing lead magnets i'm doing webinars I'm doing all of those things with up viral. And if you watch what I'm doing, you'll see. All right. So many tools in my arsenal. I promise to get back to it. If you don't, Clint, uh, Captain Flint, I'm going to come after you. Deborah says mm -hmm. you're not alone. All right. Linda, I have all the tools I need to start using them as well. On that note, I will see you later today. Thank you, Linda. Good to see you, Linda. Uh, 
anyway, it's, 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 I mean, all right. Um, no traffic, nothing works. I don't understand that link. A viral doesn't work without traffic at the front door. You're absolutely correct. So YouTube ads are a great connection. Have you guys done a training on all the other things that a viral does? Janine's question. Um, the answer, short answer is yes. Uh, I'm sure Deborah's going to pop in <laughs> with, some, with the link, but there is a show that I did and I don't remember the date. It was last year and I probably need to redo it because the show was called Seven Ways of Using Up Viral, which included lead magnets and webinars and all those kind of things. So I did that, but my the list that I created recently, I'm up to 24 different ways of using up viral. 24 different ways of using up viral. So I probably need to do a new session on that. All right, thank you. I think that kind of wraps it up. Everybody's just sending us wonderful compliments and overflowing with bubbly good words. So thank you very much. Um, Pat says, great session. Thanks to both of you. Uh, Lenny says, a year of co-pilot replays. Nice session. Wow, very cool. Awesome. Thank you both. Danny, thank, thank you, you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. No problem. Way to expose us to something that we haven't been thinking about. Uh, Janine, of course, asked the usual question. Links for replays. Actually, if you scroll up, Deborah provided all those links a few <laughs> minutes ago. But just come over to the Up Viral group. There is the link for all the replays in the guides. Or go to the YouTube channel that Up Viral has. <gasps> We've been talking about YouTube all day. So go over there. There is Deborah. Exactly. Pops them in again. Thank you, Deborah. You're freaking awesome, Deborah. Uh, Jeff says, do you have the 24 ways list? Um, I do. Come see me. I do have that. Please do the ways for Up Viral. All right. Thank you all. Cool. Anything else you want to say, Danny, on the way out? Uh, nope, that's it. And uh, take care, guys. Nice seeing you, Mitch. <laughs> nice to see you, Danny. Let's talk again. Yep. All right. Th thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you again next week. Uh, next week is the Q&A show. So if you have any questions, if you have anything you want me to cover, any of that kind of stuff, we're not going to do campaign reviews. That's going to be a separate show now. Uh, Sata, I just talked about the recording, so go to the YouTube channel, go to the Facebook group. Um, so next week is Q&A. If you have anything, let me know or answer the survey that you get when we do a Q&A show, what your questions are, and we will cover those. And we will see you again next week on the Up Viral Co-Pilot Show. Thanks, Danny. Bye, guys. Take care. See you, Mitch.